Not only focusing on Hillary Clinton speaking to her Wes a Wellesley crowd, that's her alma mater, by the way, but President Trump uh, meeting with G7 leaders and signing a declaration despite snickering yesterday, agreeing to attack terrorism, extremism. We've got retired Navy Captain Chuck Nash, former aide to Margaret Thatcher and Al Gardner, and U.S. News and World Report contributor Ashley Pratt. All right, Ashley, they agree on the terrorism and extremism thing. Obviously, they don't all agree on the means to pay for it, that is, being contributing uh, members in good standing to NATO. Only five of the 28 nations are, which was something the president was bemoaning yesterday. But where do you see this concerted agreement going if only 23, uh, if only five of the 28 member nations are, are, are paying in good stead? Look, I, I do think that that is a significant issue, and I'm glad that President Trump did address that yesterday. I do think that, you know, the member countries have to pay their fair share in this. And when it comes to protecting, you know, countries all over the world from extremism and from terrorism, and as we've seen with the sad, you know, tragedy happening out of Manchester, I, I think at this point it really should be a joint effort, and the U.S. shouldn't be taking on a lot of this burden, as well as, you know, the five other countries that are paying for it. So I think setting that precedent, you know, as the United States of America is important and a good first step at hopefully trying to remedy some of that. Um, you know, what I don't want to see are Republican leaders going out there calling the other countries deadbeats or any of that. I, I think there needs to be a real joint effort of everybody to come together and to start pitching in. All right. Well, they're, they're not. I mean, but, but again, I, you're right. I mean, the, the fact that they are deadbeats is, is, is shouldn't be an issue for the time being. But uh, Chuck Nash, the one thing I am worried about here is that this kind of proclamation or agreement in which they all say we don't really uh, you know, want to let terrorism go or, or, or dismiss extremism, fine. That's like saying, all right, you're all for you know, love and peace and understanding, great. Mm -hmm. But w w what do you want to hear? Uh, and have you heard it? Well, talk's cheap, Neil. Uh, so what we really need to see is what are they going to do about it? Because uh, just as early as yesterday, you had the Italian delegation uh, trying to push back against the American delegation to uh, uh, get more involved in taking uh, more of the, uh, the immigrants that Europe is dealing with into the United States. And they wanted to focus on finding uh, permanent housing uh, for all of these immigrants, uh, as opposed to fighting the terrorism and getting control of the borders, well, which by the was way, the U.S. position. Italy could be setting an example there, but it's not, so I found that a little rich. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Italy has been inundated uh, with, uh, with immigrants uh, from uh, sub-Saharan Africa. So it's a major problem. They've got to get their arms around it. Uh, maybe we can just look back on this later as a, as a good first step. But there has to be action, uh, not just the typical NATO, which we used to joke stood for, you know, no action talk only. You know, um, Niall, I know as a former to, to Maggie Thatcher, I mean, she was famous for or, or sort of shaking, uh, you know, the European community, not called such at the time, uh, to, 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 its, to, to its basic DNA. What, what, what are we going to do? How aggressively are we going to go after tyrants and bad guys, and that's this is long before the the age of terror. Obviously, at the time of IRA attacks and all all that, I, I understand. But who is that leader today? I mean, when these groups gather, who is filling that role? Well, that's a very good question, and I think the the G7 is largely a sort of talking shop, and so. The statements coming out of Sicily today, I mean, they don't really matter that much in real terms. They're largely symbolic. Um, and I think in most of Europe, uh, you do have, I think, a culture of, you know, appeasement uh, towards uh, dictatorial regimes. You have a culture of uh, doing basically little at all to confront Islamist terrorism. And I think that yesterday, uh, Donald Trump was right to throw down the gauntlet to NATO allies in Brussels urging them to invest more in their own defenses. Uh, that's a very important uh, signal to be sending to Europe because for far too long, European countries have not been spending as much as they need to do on their defense. They've not been honoring the commitments that have been uh, agreed to. Uh, and I think that they need to hear this, uh, this strong uh, message coming from uh, Washington. Having said that, I, I do think that uh, it's important that uh, the United States, President Trump in particular, send a very clear message that um, the free world will stand up not only to ISIS but also to Russia as well. That was largely missing, I think, from uh, the, uh, the Brussels mini-summit yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's vitally important the free world unites together in the face of Russian aggression and warn the Russians that they're playing with fire if they seek to threaten the Baltic states or Eastern Europe.
Uh, the fact that the president didn't do that actually raised eyebrows. Um, what did you think? It certainly did. And I think, you know, this, again, going back to what we were just discussing, is a great first step. I do think that there were a lot of things that weren't addressed. I do think going into this, Donald Trump was facing a lot of tension, uh, let's put it that way, given the fact that, you know, he has been tough on the idea of migration and immigrants coming into the country. He's been really difficult on all of that. And I do think just given the kind of enlightenment we've seen around all of the Russian, you know, hacking and probing and investigations here out of our own news cycle, maybe it was the exact reason as to why he didn't stand up to that, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I do think that before this trip, he was plagued with a lot of that. Um, and now with Kushner being, you know, investigated as well, I do think that this probably is something he maybe wants to steer clear from. But I do think it would have sent a strong message had he said that and maybe would have taken a lot of the spotlight off of it. You know, Captain, it depends on who you talk to about this trip, and it's not over yet. But. Uh that this will be the one that, that roiled the British because of not only this terror attack, uh, but the fact that s details of that and other things leaked out courtesy some agencies within the United States. We don't know who. But I, I am wondering here whether Europe gets it more than we about l leaks uh, and that they're important to track down. Uh, the substance of them is one thing, but, but who keeps doing it is quite another. Do you think that that was addressed and that people in this country picked up on it or no? Well, you know, if you look back into uh, British history and you get the Cambridge spies and the Brits have had more than their share of leakers right. and in fact spies. So, uh, you know, people who live in glass houses, uh, that that's applicable here. Uh, but what you're seeing here in the U.S. administration, unfortunately, uh, is an embedded bureaucracy, a cabal that is intentionally trying to undermine this president and in doing so is undermining our national security. So we can't look at this as just a purely a political play by these people. We have to look at the, at the second and third order effects of this, which are severely damaging to our national security. Guys, I want to thank you all.